Claude 2 has just come out by Anthropic and a lot of people have asked me to do a comparison with it between ChatGPT. So can GPT-4 still wear the crown of large language models or has Claude really up their game with number two? I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Well, we'll find out in this video because I'm going to run through about four or five different prompts that test both platforms and we'll go through some of the pros and cons of which one of these um, is the best really and you tell me what you think in the comments I'd be really interested to know so first of all then let's start off with a simple prompt that uh, gets the large language model to write a small business uh, plan basically so if what you do with Claude and it is only available in the US and the UK at the moment, which is a bit of a shame, but perhaps that will um, come uh, to all countries very, very soon. I would imagine it will do. So I'll put in the prompt down the bottom here. We don't need to attach anything, which you can do with Claude, by the way. Really good. Um, my small business sells artisan soaps. Help me devise a cost-effective marketing strategy that can increase brand awareness and boost online sales. So that's what I'm putting into Claude. So we'll get that off and running and then we'll do the same in ChatGPT. We're going to use GPT-4, so the plus version, which costs $20 a month at the moment um, for ChatGPT. And I think what I'll do is I might be able to just grab this window. Why don't we just pull it over here like this and so we can see them uh, both operating together and see as well which one's the quickest. There we go. Let's get them both in, the, in shot. There they are right next to each other. So this is already finished. Claude 2 has already finished with this. It's done it in bullet points, just like uh, ChatGPT, only they've used numbers. ChatGPT is always doing like 10 things. So I would imagine this will stop when it gets to 10. But yeah, Claude 2 is finished and it's only done about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, about 8 bullet points there. And yeah, ChatGPT has done 10 and finished as predicted. It is nothing but predictable, uh, our uh, good old GPT-4. No surprise here. So looking at the actual quality then of what it said, let's go and have a look over here. Uh, here are some of the cost-effective marketing ideas for your artisan soap business. Start an Instagram account showing beautiful photos of your soaps. That's good. Uh, describing your brand story. Create a TikTok account and make short, fun videos uh, showing how you make the soaps, your ingredients and packaging. Look for local craft fairs. Run occasional social media giveaways and contests. Partner with other complementary local businesses like spas, boutiques or candlemen. That's a good idea, isn't it? Send free product samples to influential bloggers, not bad. And then optimize your website and product descriptions uh, for SEO, basically. Now, what does ChatGPT say at GPT-4? Uh, absolutely, I'd be glad to help you develop a marketing strategy for your artisan soap. So let's drag it into window a little bit more and increase the size of the font there so we can all see it. Uh, target audience identification. That's something that this does not cover at all, which you could argue is first step. So Claude 2 did not say that. Understand your target market. Are they women, men, or both? What's their age? And I think that's very good advice. You know, if you're making uh, the things that it says over here in Claude 2, like an Instagram account showing beautiful photos and so on, that's great, but it's very general. You're not really targeting a certain market, which is always better to do, by the way. Branding. Ensure that your brand identity is consistent across all channels. Good advice. SEO optimized website. Uh, that's also good. It says it on Claude 2 as well. Content marketing. Regularly publish engaging content on your blog to help drive traffic. And then it gives some ideas for some topics. Email marketing. Collect email addresses from website visitors social media marketing, paid advertising, depending on your budget, you might want to advertise on Google, customer reviews and testimonials, referral program, also good advice and affiliate program, selling on multiple platforms besides your website, consider other online marketplaces like Etsy, Amazon or eBay. That's really good advice. And 
I think both of them have come up with some good tips, but I do think in this instance, ChatGPT has done a little bit better job right off the bat there. And really it started with the most important thing, which is to work out who your ideal customer is. And by the way, if you're into ChatGPT and large language models and comparisons like this, you might wanna jump into this, which is my uh, free group on ChatGPT and AI and BARD and everything else we talk about in there, chatbots, you name it. Uh, 6.2 thousand members right now, and it's just free to join. There's a link underneath the description if you want to come on, uh, join in the party we got going on over there for us geeks. Um, now, the next prompt then, let's try something else. Let's try like a little product description, maybe say for like an e-commerce store or something like that. There you go. I'm introducing a new line of eco-friendly supplies, write an engaging product description of 200 words for a bamboo-based A4 notebook. How random is that? Well, let's see how well they both do, running alongside each other again. There we go. Oh, Claude's just vanished and hasn't done anything, so I'll, I'll do it again. Okay, they're both off and running. A break of a couple of lengths to death duty maroon jackets. So far, so good. Both banging that out really quickly. So GPT-4 says, introducing our new bamboo uh, eco notebook, the epitome of sustainability meets sophistication. It's an A4 size notebook, thoughtfully crafted with an ethos of ecological responsibility, perfect for your daily office needs. Um, blah, blah, blah. Ends with... Choosing this bamboo eco notebook isn't just an office supply decision. It's a step towards embracing sustainability. So that's a nice touch. Then we've got uh, just over this side. Here we have Claude 2's uh, response to that prompt. Here is a 202 word product description. So it's, it's told us how many words there are. That's nice. Uh, go green with our new eco notebook crafted from responsibly sourced bamboo and filled with recycled paper. The natural beauty of bamboo fiber covers this sleek modern notebook. That's all good. And then it ends with make your mark with minimal impact. Our eco notebook offers an ethical, sustainable alternative to standard office supplies. Go green, get inspired and take note all with this responsible, earth-conscious bamboo notebook. I like that. It doesn't mention anything about A4 in the description, which is one thing I did say uh, that it was. So you could argue that it didn't include that. Uh, I didn't say there was 200 sheets either, so it's hallucinating. We may have got that from this 200 that was mentioned in the prompt. Uh, having said that, GPT-4 has said there's 160 pages. But of course, you can easily edit, edit both of these anyway. But I think they both did a good job of that. I don't know how many words uh, GPT-4 did, but at least these, you know, Claude 2 actually counted them and told us, which is good. Now, let's just talk a little bit about the benefits of Claude over GPT-4 that you might be interested in. The first one is that it can take in a ton of text. So if we were to just get, I'm just going to get this right now. This is a big uh, transcript of a video. We'll start a, a new message with Claude and I'll show you the difference. If I just say, please summarize the following text. Okay, I'm going to put in this massive amount of text. Oh, it's actually pasted it in as a text document, even though I just grabbed the text from the from the, the big notepad here. Look at this. That's all I did was copy that, and it's turned it into a file. Very clever. But we'll press submit on that. Now, if we go and try that with a brand new chat in GPT-4, just default, and then we'll paste in all of that and do the same thing. Unfortunately, this is what you're going to get. The message you submitted was too long. Please reload the conversation and submit something shorter, which is really annoying. Look what it's done. It's actually giving me the summary, whereas GPT-4 has just uh, failed on that uh, with its standard window. And the reason is, is because the amount of characters or tokens that uh, GPT-4 can take is about 8,000 and good old Claude 2 here can take in 100,000, which is about 75,000 words. Holy moly. That's a huge amount of words. I mean, think about it. It's practically a whole book, 
you can just put straight into this chat window and then it's able to work with that really quickly. To The way round it, if you're going to use ChatGPT, is to probably put it in something like a PDF and then we're able to do this. We can do a new chat, then using something like one of these two plugins here, or this particular plugin called AI PDF, I think it is. Let's just scroll up. Yep, AI PDF. We can now uh, get it to summarize any PDF that we upload online. So I've just uploaded this massive great Tesla uh, Q1 report. And now we're able to get that plug in to visit there and then get all of the content. But I can't put it directly into the window or any big amount of text into that window. However, there is a benefit with, of course, a chat GPT in that it can connect to the web. I mean, that's another benefit over Claude 2. Claude 2 can't connect to the Internet. No Internet! So that's a bit annoying. Obviously, you can drag stuff into it, which is nice. But, you know, it can't just go online or read a website, which we used to love about, um, you know, or we missed massively with ChatGPT, but they solved that problem. Although at the time of doing this video, Browse with Bing has gone, we can still use these plugins as well. And as you can see, it's doing a good job there of, of going through a massive report. How big? I don't know. Let's have a look here. How many pages? This is the report. You can see uh, on this window here, it's, it's like 29 pages long. So a huge amount of text that it's going through. Uh, we finished processing the whole document with the PDF search plugin. What else would you like to know? Oh, let's try something else that I know that Claude cannot do, and that is graphs. It can't make nice graphs. So let's try and do that now. And let's make uh, this center stage now for a moment, ChatGPT, because we're using this Diagram uh, plugin right here to go and generate some graphs from all of that information right there. So this is something else that ChatGPT can do that Claude 2 cannot at the moment. And um, by the way, cost wise to actually use the API and, and use credits, use tokens from both platforms. Now, there, there is a huge benefit with Claude 2 in that the cost for um, let me have a look at my notes here. The, the cost for Claude 2 for 1 million tokens is 11 US dollars, whereas the cost for a million tokens with GPT-4 is $60. So it's almost, GPT-4 is almost five times more expensive uh, than Claude 2. So that's really worth noting. And here we are, it started producing them. I, do, I must admit, I've got, I do love this feature of ChatGPT. Look at that, total automotive revenues in millions. And we're right up here, look at this, Q1, a little dip there for Tesla. But it, sometimes it's so easy to understand data when you can just see it in a nice easy chart like that. Energy generation and storage revenue, so look at that. And then uh, total production of vehicles kind of tailed off at 440,000 in Q1. Uh, total deliveries, number of Tesla locations has gone up to 1,000. And in seconds, we understand that report probably better than had we just sat there reading it all. So that's another benefit of GPT-4 over Claude 2. Now let's give it a, a really simple prompt, both of them that tests its sort of ability to understand what we're saying. And I'm going to this time ask this little simple question. Given that my revenue last quarter was $50,000 and my costs were $30,000 and I invested $10,000 back into the business, meaning I'll have $10,000 spare, what was my net income and what percentage of my revenue did I invest back into the business? Let's put that to both of these platforms. Claude 2, let's put it in there and see if they both understand the question. Uh, well, look at that. I mean, Claude 2 has certainly whipped out an answer here, hasn't it? And so has a GPT-4. It's explaining everything as well. So they both finished. Claude 2 was a little faster. Now, let's look at what Claude 2 has said and, and see its breakdown of this. Uh, it says, OK, let's break this down. So that that is all correct. And it's done that fine. And if we have a look over at GPT-4, what has it done? 
So your net income last quarter was $10,000 and you invested 20% back in. So it has taken off the investment money, whereas Claude 2 did not. And I could argue, argue a case for each, really, because you could say that the true net profit um, was in fact $20,000 and it was your choice to take some money and invest it back in. So that is a bit of a tricky one, but they did have two different answers, didn't they? All right, let's try something else. Let's see how good they are at writing emails. We'll do a quick email test. So the prompts are in, write a professional yet warm email to a supplier informing them of a delay in payment due to an unexpected cash flow issue. Let's try that out. So it's pretty fast, I must admit, Anthropic. Look at it go here. It's like, it's a bit like GT, uh, GPT Turbo, 3.5 Turbo, I would say. So it's done and GPT-4 is still writing. Uh, let's read how good this version is from Claude 2. Dear valued supplier, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to reach out regarding our recent order from your company. Unfortunately, due to some unexpected cash flow challenges on our end, we will need to delay our payment that was originally due on July the 15th. Uh, yes, fine. We don't know it was the July the 15th, but that's cool. We'll, we'll do that. Um, let's see what the end says. Thank you for your patience and understanding. I uh, look forward to resolving this promptly and continuing our work. Nothing wrong with that email at all. Then we've got a bit of a longer email here from uh, GPT-4. Let's zoom in a bit. Uh, I trust this message finds you well. I'm writing to you on behalf of, and it's put a placeholder in there. So that's probably more useful concerning our recent invoice number. Again, a placeholder and then a due date placeholder, unlike uh, Claw 2, which just wrote the email as it as it thought it should. Uh, I would like to bring to your attention an unexpected and short-term cash flow issue that has recently arisen within our company. While uh, we are diligently working to rectify the situation, it has temporarily impacted on our ability to meet some financial obligations in the usual time frame. Oh, okay. And, and unfortunately, this includes your invoice. <laughs> uh, ends with, thank you once again for your understanding. Uh, and it's done the placeholders again for the email, which I think is a really useful touch. And again, uh, Claude did one of them. It did do one of them. It just said your name in brackets. So not too bad. But again, if, if it's cost that you're really thinking of here, if you're using the API, then you could argue that Claude 2 did an adequate job. And, uh, you know, GPT-4, yes, it was really good but it would have cost five times as much to generate that text. That's too much. <laughs> so that's um, really just a quick overview of the two platforms. What do you think? Which one do you think did the better job in this test, in this video? Let me know in the comments underneath. I'll be really interested to hear your thoughts. And don't forget, if you're a bit of an AI fanatic, uh, as uh, me and these 6,000 odd people are, then come and join the free group. The link is underneath this video. We'd be loved, lovely to have you there. 6.2 thousand now. It keeps just going up and up and up. We've got hundreds of people joining every single day now. And people are just sharing such really good stuff. I mean, we can see here this this guy, Craig, just said about uh, Elon Musk's new chat GPT competitor. Uh, could this... ChatGPT's new competition, could it be? Uh, how much to sell chatbots for? Uh, talking about an AI-powered life coach. We've got all of these really good things here. One challenge trick. People are sharing prompts. It's probably a bit of you, I don't know. But if it is, then just click the link underneath this video. Thanks for watching. And uh, I hope to see you in another video in just a second. Bye-bye.